This video will be on how to compute probabilities and percentiles of a standard normal probability distribution. The normal probability distribution is a continuous probability distribution. The normal distribution has many applications. Let's consider an example where preserved fruit are tinned automatically. If the tins are expected to be 500 grams, there may be variation as some tins may be more or less than 500 grams. As the result of the inherent variation of the process, the contents of most tins will be around 500 grams, with the contents of fewer tins being extremely larger than 500 grams or much less than 500 grams. In this case, the normal distribution becomes an appropriate distribution to fit this type of data. A second example takes a look at marks scored by grade 12s in a subject. If the average is 44%, then most students' marks are around the mean and fewer students will have extremely higher marks or extremely lower marks from this mean of 44%. Again, the normal distribution becomes an appropriate distribution to use to fit this type of data. The normal distribution has a probability density function defined by f of x in the top right hand corner, given by this formula here. It's used to obtain the area under the probability density curve for an interval of x. And this area is then equivalent to the probability of x in that interval. It is bell-shaped, symmetrical around the mean, and the total area under the curve is equal to one. The entire family for normal probability distributions can be told apart by two parameters, its mean mu and its variance sigma squared. The following figure gives examples of the different probability density curves that can be obtained from the family of normal distributions. As can be seen, the value of mu indicates the point of symmetry on the x-axis for each distribution. The red, the green, and the blue graphs are centered at zero because their mu values are equal to zero. The pink graph, however, is centered around negative 2 since its mu value is equal to negative 2. The red curve, which is the tallest, indicates that the values from that population are closely distributed around the mean in comparison to the other graphs. This indicates it has a lower value for the standard deviation and therefore it implies that it will have the lowest value for the variance which would be from the data given 0.2. The blue graph is the flattest in comparison to the other graphs. This means the values from this population are more spread out around the mean. Its standard deviation ends up being much larger than the others, and hence its variance would end up being the biggest one of the four given in this example. So the value would end up being sigma squared is equal to five. In conclusion, the larger the value of sigma, the larger the variability and therefore the flatter the curve. The highest point on the normal curve is at the mean, which is equal to the median and that is equal to the mode. For example, Suppose that you have exam marks, and from these exam marks, the mean is obtained as 55.73, the median is 56, and the mode is 54. That distribution of marks would be approximately normal. The mean can be any numerical value. It can be negative, zero, or positive. As can be seen on the following graphs, the first graph is centered around negative 10, so the mean is negative 10. The second is centered around 0, therefore the mean is 0. And the final graph 
has a mean of 20. The question that follows asks, does the variance differ in the above cases? In this case, it can be seen that the height of these three graphs is exactly the same. Therefore, the variance would be the same as the height indicates that the variation is the same in all three graphs. The normal distribution is symmetric around mu and the tails of the curve extend to infinity in both directions and theoretically never touch the horizontal axis. If the probability density curve is folded around the mean such that the area to the left lies on top of the area to the right, it will be a perfect fit. This shows that the two halves are mirror images of each other. The total area under the curve is 1, and therefore the total area to, under the curve to the left of mu is 0 0.5, which is equal to the area under the curve to the right of mu. The empirical rule was derived from the normal distribution such that it can be used for any other symmetrical distribution. Now the empirical rule states that approximately 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean, and approximately 100% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So any values that are found outside of the three standard deviations of the mean are considered to be outliers, and therefore the probability of observing an outlier is very small. Let us take a look at an example. We can assume that the weights of newborn babies are normally distributed with mean 3.2 kilograms and standard deviation 0.5 kilograms. What is the probability that a randomly selected newborn baby will weigh at least 3.4 kilograms? The first step is to formulate or identify the variable. In this case, let x be the weight of a newborn baby in kilograms. Step two, formulate the probability distribution. In this case, x will follow a normal distribution with a mean of 3.2 and variance 0.5 squared. Step three, identify the required probability on the normal figure. On the normal figure, the central position will be the mean 3.2 and the area of interest is to the right of 3.4. The axis that we are working with is the x-axis. Step four, how do we calculate the area to the right of 3.4, which is equivalent to the probability of interest? Since the entire family of normal distributions can be told apart by their mean and variance, it implies there are many random variables that can be observed from the normal distribution. Therefore, in order to calculate probabilities for any normal random variable, the normal random variable is standardized by first of all calculating the z-score. The z-score is defined as x minus mu divided by sigma. The distribution of the z-variable is also normally distributed with a mean of zero and a variance of one. The standard normal probability distribution is centered around zero and to the left of zero there are negative z values on the x-axis and to the right are positive z values. As can be seen the graph is also bell-shaped and symmetrical. The area under the graph is equivalent to the probabilities for the standard normal probability distribution. Once the z-scores are calculated, the standard normal probability tables can be used to get the area under the curve to the left of the z-value. There are two tables, 
one for negative z values and one for positive z values. Let's take a look at how to use the normal probability tables. Let's say we want to calculate the probability that z is less than 0 0.63. So our z value of interest is 0 0.63 and we want the area under the curve to the left of 0 0.63. So the value of z up until the first decimal place gives the position of the row and the second decimal place gives the position of the column. So the row is 0 0.6 and the column is 0 0.03 which is at the second decimal place and the intersection of the row and the column gives the probability of interest.